Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei... Welcome to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. You know, running a business can be a very fulfilling aspect of self-independence, but it's also no child's play. I can attest to this. Running a business is one of the toughest things that anyone could ever do in their lives, but it's also one of the most rewarding. Well, this evening's guests on Real Talk are entrepreneurs in their own right, and they happen to be in business with family. We've got groups from siblings, to a married couple, to even a mother and daughter pair. So we've invited them to share their journeys and also let us in on some of the dynamics of their family business. And if there's any formula to making it all work and working with each other and sharing blood and sharing a home potentially. Well, my first guests are three trailblazers who are pushing boundaries in the TV, film and video production industry with productions under their belts such as SABC One's My Perfect Family, Tulino Tulani and SABC Three's Bedford Wives, just to name drop a few. Burnt uh, Onion, who said orange guys, <laughs> Burnt <laughs> Onion production founders, Ritabi Lekatleho and Tepo Ramapakela join us now in studio. Hello everybody. Hi. Hi. I mean, the resemblance. The what undeniable. are you talking about? What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> well, I think you know. Yeah, maybe we yeah, need to talk to mom. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the resemblance is uncanny. Welcome. Thank, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. So, Burnt Onion, I mean, I looked at that name and I thought, ooh, someone was burning onions when they were left to cook the meal <laughs> at home growing up. Where did the name originate? Well, I suppose I'll tell that. Like, I, I, it doesn't really come from anywhere. I just wanted a name that was unique, and it was left there. I was like, "What about burnt onions?" And they were both like, "Yeah." <laughs> I, was, I didn't think they'd buy it. <laughs> We've had to we, run with it. Yeah, now. it's just—it's not like we had any better idea. So. <laughs> so this is how decisions are made. Yeah. She says something, yep. and then the two of you. No, we always go with the first one. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, I mean, there's there's three of us, so it's a democracy either way. Yes, so whatever, yes, yes. if there's ever a no vote, I mean, it must be a majority decision. You're right. So the majority was like, yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's and, the one. And it goes with what we do, always cooking. That's why the onions are burnt, because we're always cooking and doing other things that you'll, you know, <laughs> the onions. Ideas, yeah, exactly. exactly. So it works quite well in terms of our I feel like identity. you just made the connection. <laughs> <laughs> but it's allowed. It's actually part of our corporate identity, <laughs> so she didn't make it up. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually yeah. been in, the pit, in a pitch, and uh, the guy was like, you know what, the onions aren't burnt, they're well done. And I was like, Ooh, oh, I like that. We're nice. going to write that on our corporate identity. That's for nice. Day. Yeah. But this going of the flow thing clearly has been part of your formula. You guys formed your company and then in the same year you got your first commission from SABC yeah how fortunate is that what do you put that down to is um, it the chemistry family mm. what yeah I think it's a combination of everything um, we basically you know um, um, understand what we all want to, to achieve and we had the same vision and same goal um, and I think we got great ideas yeah I'd love to believe that uh, which is I think what the SABC bought into mm. you know, okay. mm. with the, with the, with uh, my perfect family, which was the first commission. So, yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes you ride your luck. Um, I mean, prior to that, obviously, we'd been working in the industry yes. for other we people. We know you on yeah. screen. We also know the table. We know the two of you. Right. Yeah. Your screen yeah. roles. Yeah. Uh, it was both on screen and behind the scenes. So. There was grafting there in terms of, you know, setting us uh, ourselves up yeah, to, to, yeah, to start up. Yeah, and these there. relationships. But Tepo, you're like the outsider. <laughs> I am. When it comes to this mix. Yeah, yeah. You were doing what? Stats? Yeah, and yeah the boring the stuff in a bank. You're yeah. an analyst and statistician in a bank. Yeah, you make it sound so prestige. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Because we don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. We're all sitting and going, what is that? I don't yeah. even know. In the absence yeah. of knowledge. Yeah, yeah so, so. I, sp I spent some time in the bank, and uh, I reached that point where I was like, it's not as exciting as I thought it would be. Fortunately, it was at, at the time when they were both also unemployed. Okay. So we put all our eggs in one basket in that year. And you were the financier. 
I'm the guy who puts everything together. Uh -huh. I, I make sure that they don't yeah, run away too far that's it. with their ideas. I bring, I wrong. reel them back in. Okay. Yeah, He's the one who right. registered the company and everything. So, I mean, yes, I can have an idea. Ah, I want to start a company. And yeah. then, yeah. But it was actually us two to start, and Kat was off doing his own things. And then one year, he's like, can I join you guys? And we're like, okay, Shab, ah. we'll allow you in. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, who's I the oldest? I just to wait for them to, to start first. Before to prove that this thing can work. <laughs> and before <laughs> we... <laughs> come yeah, yeah, just I get on in motion. And before we knew it, he was the MD. We're like, yeah, oh, and then we're like, how did that happen? <laughs> we were here first. <laughs> but you know, our first idea, My Perfect Family, was great because you know it's almost half about our lives. These, ch it was about a child star growing up in a home in Deep Blue. We grew up in Deep Blue, so yeah, it was yeah. a great parallel to our lives and so much fun to make. And we, we were like, our first pitch and then our first commission. That's that was incredible. It was just destined. Yeah, destined. So who's the oldest? Who's the middle? Who's the youngest? One, uh, guess. The no, ah. damn, this is a bad game. Bad, bad so game. Terrible bad, bad game. Because, I mean, we don't get offended. Yeah, yeah. So, if you had yeah. to call it. Tep, are you the oldest? Uh, yeah. Are you yeah. asking or are you? <laughs> <laughs> she's oh, checking, I mean, she's like, okay, mm. Tep, the oldest. Tep, you're the baby. I'm the baby. Yay, yeah. I got it right, I got it right, I got it right. Yeah. Uh, so you're the middle one. Middle child. And so when you said that, when well, you guys said that you started the company together, Tep, and Tep, you started it together, and Katlo, you came along later. Uh, now, understanding the order that you come in, in the family, does that suggest that there's always been a closeness? And that dynamic is there. It's the real thing about siblings. Yeah. One and three usually would gang up. The middle child is always like, Am I the yeah. law school? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. We were a lot closer, especially when I was younger, because, I mean, you know, big brother, mother used to leave us. He would take care. Katlao was middle child. I don't know where he was. I don't know what that time. means, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he was. Yes. But, I, but I think what's weird now is that Katla and I have become, I think, you know, closer in a bond, and Tepo's now overseeing both of us, like, yes. you know, like herding us together. Right. So we've grown to have a stronger bond, whereas as kids, I don't think our bond was as strong. So what is the hardest thing then about being in business with, with your siblings? Uh, to leave that sibling stuff at home mm -hmm. and do the business stuff, and then when you're doing the family stuff, to leave the business at work. Because it's very easy to get caught up in like, oh yeah, but did you get that email? Should we at while we're at dinner with yes. the family? Yes. Oh, wouldn't want to sit yeah. around a table with the three of you. <laughs> oh, it happens all the time. Yes. Ask our yeah. parents. Yes. Yeah. So, so we always have to draw a line of like, okay, cool. Yes, we work together and we're family, but there has to be those lines at work. We can't be saying, oh no, I can't mm -hmm. be whining mm -hmm. like the little sister. And mm -hmm. in family gatherings, I can't be asking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The next shoot. And then on top of that, if you're broke the person you're running to is also broke. <laughs> <laughs> Your yes. older brother is like, hey, <laughs> we know the numbers. We're in this business together. Yeah. Yeah. That you must saw, be annoying. You saw the statements yes. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, our parents are all like, so we're all in this together. So it's not like one child is exceeding and exactly. they can be like, oh yeah, exactly. that's my start. It's like, we're all in this together every time. And yeah. that's what broadcasting the game is also like that. You go from contract to contract mm. to contract. So how do you make sure that at least that the business can take, well, this is your question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that there's a name to continue with moving forward. Um, I mean, you always, you, it's, it, we're always strategizing. Um, obviously, we can't put our eggs all in one basket. Um, and that's what we've grown to know over the, the last 10 years is, I mean, yeah. there have been times that we, you know, we all know what the, the broadcast is go through their ups and downs, mm. which can affect your business. So mm. it's about trying to find other avenues outside of that, which is now obviously why we're venturing into films. Yes, we've um, got a few titles mm. we can expect next year. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, at the beginning of the year, we're actually going to be directing our first feature film. Boop, boop. Um, and <laughs> there are yeah. a lot more comedy <laughs> features that, that will be coming out between next year and the following year. So. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really about not putting all your eggs in one basket, yeah. Would you advise anybody else to do it? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> what, he always says that. No, <laughs> to work <laughs> your business with family. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that they must do, that they must do. That they must yeah. do. That they must do. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, yeah. But, but everywhere we go, people ask, but how did you guys get it together? We like, it was so natural. Like, uh, how else could we 
not have not. done it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it makes sense. I mean, these are the people you know the most. Yes. And we know each other and our personalities. So mm. nothing's ever that deep or that personal <laughs> that you're like, but the next day you're just like, you know, get it together. I like that yeah. insight. I like that insight. Yeah. You've been through the best and the worst together. Yeah. So the ins and outs. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Make it sound so cool. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I could. I don't think I could go into business with my siblings. I wonder what your thoughts are. Well, when we return, I'm joined by the mother-daughter duo who are one of Joburg's go-to premium baking queens. And they also pride themselves on high quality, unique and top of the range confectionery products. We'll meet them after the break. We have three main divisions part of our company. The main one being our speciality cakes and wedding cakes. This we take great pride in producing high quality, top end cakes as well as delicious cakes. The second division is our courses where we train everyone from beginners to advanced on different cake techniques. And thirdly, our retail supply store where we stock a large range of baking products and tools. Oh, beautiful creations, clearly made with love. Well, Kelly Jane Holman and Mother Beverly Finlinson are the powerhouse mother and daughter team behind Kelly Jane Cake Boutique. Their combined skills, their passion and the love for baking makes it really clear and evident that you're in good confectionery hands. I know it's a lazy <laughs> pun, but yes, I'll use it anyway. Welcome, Thank welcome you. to Real Talk. How are you? Thank good and yourself? That looks like so much fun. It is fun. So much fun. I do think we have the best job in the world. Yeah. Not everyone loves their jobs like we do. Really? Yes, we're very passionate about it. Right. <laughs> no wonder the sparkles, you have the sparkle in your eyes. I know. The minute you walked in, you brought out this beautiful yes. cake and you transformed the aroma, the feeling. You clearly live, breathe, eat, and just love cake. We really do. Uh -huh. We, uh, honestly, we are so passionate mm. about cakes. We're Googling it every night. We're researching <laughs> it all the time. We're talking cake all day. Yeah. I'm mm. sure my husband, my dad, we, they know cake because <laughs> we don't that stop they talking support, about it. support, my word. <laughs> yeah. So you started when you were six? Yes. So I, I've always baked from home. Mm -hmm. Since I was small, my mom mm. used to teach me recipe books, Christmas presents. Everything was baking related. So I've really done it all my life. Yeah. I studied consumer sciences when I left. Um, after my degree, I couldn't find a job that I really liked. And mm. I think we both just fell in love. We'd always with had this dream of working together, and we've always liked the cake business. So, but we started off as a coffee shop, and gradually our cakes took over that. And then we decided, well, no more coffee shop cakes. And it's just grown beyond all expectations. Ah, look at the other legs, in fact. You do training, you mm. retail, then, of course, these orders, whether mm, yes. it's, what, wedding cakes, occasion cakes? So our main line what is cakes wedding cakes, but yeah. we do do a lot of birthday cakes every week, a lot of cakes. christening, corporate mm. confectionery. Um, just in the last two years, we opened a retail store, so everything cake-related, we sell it, we research, we import different products. Yeah. So we do that, and now we also do um, all sorts of courses, all cake decorating Yeah, so courses. the home baker. Home baker. something as exactly. good as yours. Y exactly. <laughs> so Beverly, you, are you also self-taught? Because you're responsible for the craft aspect of this. I've always I look been at all these creations on yes. top, it's like, whoa, how do you even I come from a that? family that are fairly creative. Yeah. And I used to do a lot of sewing and crafts and sew wedding dresses and that. And then when Kelly started with the cakes, it just inspired me to join her. Yeah. And it's been our passion as a family for the two of us to work together. So and when did the, when you say you, you always had a dream to work together? Well, when Kelly finished university, yeah. she was looking at what to do. And we decided, let's go for it. Why wait? Mm -hmm. And that's when we started with it. Why was your mom a natural partner? Why not? She's my best friend. We always we have get on been. very well. We always yes. have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, we work all day, all day with each other. Sometimes we sit next to each other all day, and then we talk all night on WhatsApp. <laughs> oh and then guys. I phone on my way home from work. So. <laughs> Isn't anybody 
already feel like it's getting not away. Like, no, listen, it's terrible. Can I not hear from you for a day? <laughs> never, <laughs> never. We can't. We can't go a day apart. It's terrible. That <laughs> something else. And then what happens when you disagree or when? Yeah, because there's two of you, and maybe there's a hard decision that needs to be made in the business about the business, so, and you're on polar opposites. Well, you know what? We decided from the beginning. Kelly is the face of the company. Okay. And I'm the backbone. So we discuss things and. I think it's good because the one is young, one is old, and you come to a happy medium between the two of you. So you always so find a way. We do have we disagreements. Do. Every now and then. We do, we do, mm -hmm. but they don't last. And what do you do when there's an impasse? <sighs> Just go with the flow. Exactly. Someone yeah. gives in. Someone has someone, to okay, someone do, gives in. What do you think? I Normally my mom give gives in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when it goes wrong, I can say I told you so. Exactly. <laughs> so does this not bleed into... Because clearly everything is inter intertwined. Yes. It's mm. all one with the two of you. So you don't it's ever think there should be a separation? It's okay. It's, it's no. cake. It's, it's fun. Because it's it's boundaries and anything are important. That's why I ask. It's not that we're in a corporate environment, you know, in a formal mm. environment. We work in a bakery. It's fun. It's happy. We're joking all day. So even if work had to come home with us, it's still fun. Mm. It's not stressful. So you think the industry the matters? Industry, your passion absolutely. for what you Definitely. do also matters. If you didn't have the passion for this, it wouldn't mm. work. Mm. Whatever it may be. With, with cake decorating, you have to be passionate. Because mm. it's weekends, it's long hours. And there's disasters. We've got you can a have few. a disaster. You do have a what happens? Cake falling over and the wedding's in five minutes. <laughs> How do you solve that? We always have a backup plan. <laughs> ah, it's I called a it, bottle of rescue. Yeah, a bottle of rescue. I think it's happened maybe once or twice. <laughs> that doesn't solve the cake problem. It solves your nerve problem. <laughs> Which helps us solve the cake the problem. The cake problem. Yes, okay. exactly. It's amazing. One day Kelly will be down and I'll be up. And then you talk the other one up, up again. Yes. yes and it's, yes. It's, we never have down days together. Yeah. There's always one that is stronger at a certain stage. So. So how many people are part of your team now? There's 12. 12 of us. 12 of us. Yes. And they're a lovely bunch of people. Mm -hmm. We have two men and all ladies. And Without our team, we wouldn't be anything. No. Of so course. No. Of course. And we'd like to praise them because they put a lot of good, they would like us as well. They are passionate. So what do you think should be our considerations if we think of going into business with our mom or our dads? Strong, strong relationship. I think you have a very good, strong relationship and you need to be able to talk to one another. If you're mm -hmm. not happy with an issue, you need to be able to say, mm -hmm. I don't think it's right. Mm -hmm. And we talk and it through. But it. an existing mm -hmm. strong relationship is a good start. To start off with, absolutely. Yeah. It's only yeah. made us even closer. It's made actually. us closer because, yeah. oh, how not privileged you are to work with your own daughter and to be passionate about the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, you can only grow. A mother's dream. Mother's Are you the dream. envy <laughs> <laughs> of your group of friends? I think I am actually with a lot of my friends, yes. Yeah. I can't believe how it's all just taken off. It really, we've been very fortunate, mm. absolutely. Sure, yeah. it's almost as if the love that you share um, is fueling and mm. grows the business it and does. helps it to grow. And our family are very proud mm. of us and supportive as well. So okay. without our husbands, and Kitty's brothers and, you know. Yeah, they, they have they cake on call. Us. I mean, yes. cake is on call <laughs> all the time. On tap, on call, you name it. But yes. congratulations on that good Thank food you. and wine yes. uh, competition. Thank you. Well done for that. Thanks. That was absolute dream to win that. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you were judged by, what's his name? Cake the cake box Buddy. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. What did he think? What were his impressions of your creation? Well, he loved it. He we loved made it. a full-size wedding dress out of cake with matching stiletto shoes, Flower and bouquet, bouquet. Everything all was edible. Made out of cake and edible. And he was like blown away. Wow. That's mm. It sounds beautiful. You both have <laughs> nail polish on. Yes. I'm surprised. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we have icing all over our face. You walked in with icing. I did. The makeup artist had to wipe the <laughs> icing off my face. <laughs> so well put together for people who are with ovens and all sorts of things in the mm. kitchen. Thanks. Ladies, thank you. You're thank an you absolute so inspiration. Thank you. I mean, at first I went into this thinking, never, never. These people must all be insane. But after... They probably are. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> after the previous family and this family as well, I mm. think I'm getting closer to seeing that this, there is a way to make it work. Definitely. It could possibly work. Definitely. Thank you. It can work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, coming up after this, we are going to be meeting a power couple in a business that strives to become a point of reference for integrated consulting and engineering services in Africa. So when we return, Mr. and Mrs. Mbokoto, they'll be joining me on the Real Talk Couch.
Well, tonight on Real Talk, my guests are sharing their stories and experiences on life and, of course, of being in business with family. Lita and Hombisam Bogoto have been married for 11 years. Wow. Uh, but with this bond, when it began, also came about a common passion in entrepreneurship and, of course, social change. So they wanted to create their own business and they've been running it successfully. Tori Capital came into being. And what an inspiring story it is. It proves that getting into business with the spouse might actually be a good idea and it seems to be working just fine for the two of them and they now join me on the couch hello lita hello Humbisa. Hi, Hi, congratulations on sorry capital thank, thank you. you so what so makes much. what it makes it what seven years how long eight years more eight than years more or less eight years yeah. of running this business yeah. together yes. yes so you are both coming from the financial sector Yes. Uh, in fact, there was one point where you worked at the same organization. Yes, yeah. there was. <laughs> Is this where the love affair started? No, it started at Varsity. Mm -hmm. um, and then after Varsity, he went on to work for the Development Bank of Southern Africa. And then um, he was um, at a training program. Yeah. So then he told me about the training program and I was like, oh, interesting. So I applied, but, you know, to a different division. And then I got the job. Yeah. So we got to work at the same organization for like, what, three months? Yeah. And then he moved on. He quickly moved on. Yeah. 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 But there you are. You're both <laughs> happily climbing the corporate ladder. What was happening that made you think during Pillow Talk, Yazi, love, <laughs> I think this is what we should do. Yeah. Whose idea was to recapital? We, I, I started a business when I was still at Varsity. Okay. Um, I used to consult, um, you know, basically doing accounting and tax consulting work. Uh, for construction industry and uh, so the business idea has always been there mm. uh, but now we're looking for a sector or a, basically a, a career that will expose us to a number of sectors so that at least when we uh, you know get into business we are well exposed yeah. and hence the idea of getting into project and corporate finance uh, was the main idea that mm. we had to pursue and uh, with the view that uh, once we had acquired enough skills then we'll jump and do our own thing. Yeah. So it's always been there since 2001. But couples who also get into business together face a very unique set of challenges. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. And what are, what are those? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think the dynamics, you know, in, in a home situation, um, you know, versus when you are now at the office, mm -hmm. and obviously somebody has to be the boss, you know, somebody so has to manage the other person. He is the boss, he is the chairman of the company. Okay. Um, and so I'm the CEO. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily for us, you know, his role is more of business development. And then once we have the business, then I run with the team to okay. execute the, yeah. the project. project. Yeah. Um, but the basically, I report to him. Yeah. So in a work situation, I report to him. So I then he has to be my boss at home, mm -hmm. uh, I mean at work, and then when we get home, we are husband and yeah. wife again. So it hasn't uh, changed or altered your husband and wife roles? No. 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 You're, still, you're I, able to maintain the yeah. separation? I think the importance is to really, like, you know, have clear roles, mm -hmm. and define the roles, mm -hmm. who's doing what, in, who's doing what in business, mm -hmm. and then make sure that you stick to that. If someone has to cross over, it has to be clear and you have to communicate. So communication is another yeah. big tool that you Has this use. made your communication even better? Yes, 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 yes it, it has. has. Yeah. It has. Um, I think the other thing that has helped is recognizing each other's strengths, you know, in a work environment. Um, so we don't, you know, there's no conflict of roles or interests. Uh, for example, he's a people's person. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a huge network. He gets along with people. It's easy for him, yes. you know, to build networks. Um, Whereas for me, I'm comfortable being at the office. I'm comfortable uh, running with projects and, and executing projects, even though uh, sometimes my role is client facing, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he has to do what he has to do and I have to do what I have to do. So and how do clients yeah. deal with the fact that they're dealing with the husband and wife duo? Have you yeah. ever found someone kind of being skeptical, reluctant a little bit to get into business because this, would it ever become unprofessional, the concern that maybe their times it would be unprofessional because these are people who are romantically involved? I think most clients that we've managed to source, uh, it's, it's clients that knows us, you know, they knew us even when we're still 
uh, working for the banks. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they, are, they are aware of what we're capable of doing. Uh, so, so it was based on capability more than mm. the fact that we're a couple. Mm. Um, but some of the clients didn't even know that we're married. They thought that we're just siblings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Doing much today. laughs> yeah, most of the new um, you know. clients that we get on board, they normally think that we are brother and sister uh -huh. because we're just always joking around. You know, it's we're very comfortable mm -hmm. um, with each other in a work situation. So they always, you know, ask me, where's your brother? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> not around. Not my brother. <laughs> <laughs> to Tulusile calling from Omonde. Hi, Tulusile. Good evening. Tulusile. Uh, good evening, Azania. How are you? We're super. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You have a comment? Yes, I just want to ask a question. Yes. Because I was starting a business with my mother, and uh, I asked about the issue of percentage. And uh, she, oh man, she got his historical, and I don't know. So I just want to ask the couples if, uh, or is it is it wrong to ask uh, uh, about percentage when you're starting a business with your mother? advice uh, regarding that. Okay. So it's a great question because this means a lot of hard conversations. Yeah. yeah. I think she should. They should settle they should. this now. They, they can't should. leave a question about it yes. until for it later. Yeah. Yes. It, in fact, it will help their business because uh, then the mother, if she wants the bigger percentage, she needs to put more effort into the business. Yeah. Uh, so so it's not just going to be a free carry. So yeah. it, it helps to have those hard decisions, discussions. Is she upfront. bringing more capital into the business? Mm -hmm. uh, is she bringing more in terms of the skills? And what is the value of um, that? What is yeah. the value of that? Yeah. that so they need, yes. yes. So they need to sort that out and be re realistic about it. They need to keep their emotions out of it when it when it comes to that part. Of you see, yeah. that's exactly why going into business with family has had such a bad reputation because people's families end up being broken because we struggle to have these hard conversations. As yeah. it is, we struggle to talk about money openly yeah. in a marriage. We yeah. struggle to talk about our financial difficulties within with our siblings, with our parents. Yeah. And now it's all laid bare. Yeah. There's no way to hide. It's a financial statement. We all have yeah. to see it. Yeah. So. It, it can be difficult from that perspective if you're not mature enough or if you're not ready mm. yes, for the yes. difficult things that yes. it could I think transparency confront. is just the best policy from yeah. the get-go. Um, for example, between me and him, you know, issues of what would happen if we somehow get divorced, if we disagree someday, yeah. if we dissolve the business, what happens? And, you know, um, luckily for me, Lita has always just been someone who's very comfortable, you know, with himself. He's very confident in himself. So he was, look, we have kids, so you can continue with this business and I'll move on and do something else. Wow. And, you know, I can take him at his word because I know what kind of a person he is. So the issue of <laughs> trust as well, you know, comes into play. You must just choose to trust the, the person. The best trust in yeah. business is to put it in paper. <laughs> <laughs> is to put it on paper, especially but because it's family. Yeah, but you married in community of property. Right. So, okay. so it doesn't so matter. So in any case, I'll yeah. still yeah. So you know, walk way, away with 50%. Yeah. 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 And also, you know, he's got other business interests, which I'm not involved in. So oh, Zodi so Capital just is just one. one of them. Okay. Yes. Uh, so are you that couple that's sitting in, the, in bed with the light of the laptop screens? No. <laughs> no, 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 that can't happen because there are also children, you know, in the picture, there are homeworks, there are, you know, other things, there are schedules to think about. Mm. So when I get home, I take off the CEO hat and I put on mommy and wife um, hat and I just continue with, so if business well, comes out, this transition it's just, was difficult. Coming, not for taking me. off your CEO hat and putting on your wife hat. I think the transition was more difficult for him because he still wants to be home talking about business. Yeah. And then I have to, you know, schedule a time for the following day. Uh, can <laughs> yeah. we have a meeting? I'll pencil you into yeah. my diary. All right, let's hear from another caller. Hi, good evening. Welcome to Real Talk. Oh, we've lost this caller. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank, oh, you, thank you so much. Thank you for the yeah. realness. Pleasure. We do need to go into it with our eyes wide open. Yeah. Well, after the break, we're going to meet two sisters climbing up the PR and communications industry ladder. Stay with us. Sisters, 
Ghana's Latasha Puko and Zaini Kama are fixed at the goal of becoming one of South Africa's respected PR and communication boutiques. Their clients include entertainment personalities and all sorts of brands. And with this, they say that they give their clients a sense of family, something they do with ease and absolute grace. It's their added touch. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. So, <laughs> Latasha, you started your firm four years ago. Yes, I did. Yeah. Straight out of college, um, I got my breakthrough actually getting an internship by stalking a certain um, PR maven in Johannesburg. Yeah. And I went to every single event that she went to. I stalked her on social media wow. until she noticed me. And when she noticed me, she offered me an internship. And she's like, you persistent. I worked at her company, was an intern, and then became an account manager. Right, so you learned the ropes. Yes. By interning and then started your own business. Yes, I did. Yes. And then, of course, you, uh, uh, Zainu, you were helping out all along. Yes. You were getting involved here and there. So what made you think I need a partner in this? I always turn to my family when I need clarity. Mm. It's very important for me because like you'll get very distracted, especially in the entertainment industry and what happens, and especially as a woman, the challenges you face. Mm -hmm. um, I always turn to my family for clarity. So sometimes I need to, I'm young, I'm only 28, so I need someone to turn to and be like, what do you think about this? Right. And she's always my right-hand man, so she, my right-hand woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's always there when I need to make decisions and she'll guide me because she's my older sister. Ah, so what did you think of that prospect? Were you anxious at first about getting into business with your younger sister? Yeah, because I had no clue about <laughs> PR, but as I started working with her and got to learn a lot, and I was like, okay, cool, this is a bit interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I can add my five cents worth of information, yeah. and yeah. But does she not have the, and I'll get your view. In okay, minute, okay. Does she not have <laughs> okay. the, the founder's syndrome? You know, when someone has started a business, hmm. they cut their teeth, they got the scars, they paid their school fees, as the proverbial mm -hmm. term goes, mm -hmm. they, they paid their dues. Mm -hmm. And then you come along, now that it's been up and running, and you're part of this thing that's in motion, and mm -hmm. she's got a way of doing things, and mm -hmm. maybe you have a different idea. No, not really, because we complement each other in certain ways, mm -hmm. but we work differently, two different personalities also. Yeah. So, working together, we, we actually built a closer relationship. Yeah. And yeah, we we just add value in each other's lives. Yes. Yeah. So do you have the founder syndrome? She says no. I do a right. little bit. A yeah. little Founders bit. will tell you. <laughs> yes. It's got to be done this way. It's got to be done like this. Yes, this is my baby. It's something that I built out of nothing. Mm -hmm. I never went to my mom and asked her for capital to start the business. I never had someone to invest in me. It was all um, from me in college, hustling, making sure I go to the right event, speaking to the right people, yes. starting with just a thousand rand in my bank account on my bedroom floor. I had no office space, no team, no nothing. Wow. But I just told myself, you know what, this is what I'm passionate about and I'm going to make it work. Yes. I was so lucky to work on like big brands, especially at the company I worked for and when it came to my own business, I was so blessed. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for God and my family, I truly wouldn't have made it. Yeah, wow, that's a beautiful story. It's an incredible story. Thank you. So when you come into a business that's already got some value, mm. because your business has value now, you have assets, you have customers, <laughs> yes. do you make the person joining Yes, it is your sister. Yes. Buy <laughs> <laughs> that shareholding to buy the percentage. Um, that is a conversation that we we tread lightly on because they they always believe that this is my baby, this is my business, mm -hmm. and. If the, well, one thing that I can say, especially with my sister, she doesn't want to benefit financially from this. She'll be like, I'm here if you need the extra pair of hands. I'm here if you need to manage your team. I'm just here for you. So that conversation is something that we, we're a little bit uh, weary not, of. Yes, I'm that person. You haven't tackled it. How much do you want? <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you need? Mm -hmm. I'm that person. And they're like, no, relax. It's fine. We're just here to help you. So yeah, that's, that's a conversation. Is that prudent? Always, mm, ah, TikTok, six years, five years, seven years, it's yes. like, well, I've been helping, I'm entitled. <laughs> I'm actually entitled to half. And you're like, what do you mean half? 
<laughs> I think she reaps more benefits as well from this, more than anyone else, because I have other family members that help out besides my team. Okay. So for her, I think she gets the thrill of the entertainment industry, the fast life, everything happens like this. Because with her um, career, she's more IT focused. Okay. She's computers, she's technical. So with me, she's always like, you're always at all these events, you're always doing all these things. <laughs> and I think she finds that fascinating. Well, Zenu, let's, let me hear from you then. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you worried? You're thinking this is time, because time is a resource. Mm -hmm. Time is money. Yes. And you, yes, you love your sister. You want her business to succeed, but no time comes for free. Yes. Eventually, but for now, <laughs> the business Did is so growing. <laughs> like, eventually, eventually like, we okay, got to sit eventually. down with the lawyer. <laughs> yes, and I want my shareholder certificate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but the business is still growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we both still have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody that's part of the company has a lot to learn. Yeah. So maybe in a few years' time, yeah. we can start talking about money. Yes. But for now, we're just enjoying the learning experience. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's been the hardest thing about stepping out in, on your own like this? Yo, being taken seriously as a woman in the industry. Number one, I wasn't welcomed with open arms. Mm -hmm. um, I think when people, and this is just speaking in general, when people own PR companies and you start trading on different clients, it becomes a very touchy subject. So mm -hmm. for me, I was that girl that was the new PR girl on the block and she's got all these names under her, like, you know, and it wasn't um, easy for me. I had to prove what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I had to work for free. I had to just get anyone and anyone mm -hmm. just to, to, to tell them like, look, I can do this. Yeah. Just give me a chance. Yeah. And I did that. I worked like for free for the first year. I never earned anything. Wow. Nothing. It was hard times. Yes. <laughs> it was really hard times. So I, I didn't have that privilege of people giving me money and saying build a business. I did it from scratch and from nothing. Mm. Um, that would have been one of my challenges as well. And I think just um, people generally think that when you are a female and you're doing PR in the industry and you're at all these events, that you're easy. Mm -hmm. And you get males that would make like passes at you. And... It, it gets inappropriate, so you just need to know and have your head strong and be like, no, I'm here to do my job, and this is what I'm here for. Um, but yeah, those are the challenges that we face. In I know the we a little bit, but that's so fascinating that you say that, because PR does kind of overstep those formal boundaries yes. that you're involved with the client yes. or with mm. the personality that you're managing mm -hmm. in ways that, say, other aspects of the business doesn't get involved. It exactly. goes into the personal. It goes into the person, exactly. you know. So it's easy for that line to, to, to get crossed. It and does. And especially with when you are very close to a particular client. Mm -hmm. I've worked on different sorts of clients. I work on musicians. I work on, you know, events and brands. I can do different things in different sectors. Um, and for me, it's like I get personal with all my clients, but I know that line not to cross. Right. If a musician's going to invite me to a listening party after hours and they're like, no, come through, there's drinks in the studio, we're going to chill, I'll be there for the first hour and I'll leave. Mm -hmm. I'm not there for the whole entire mess that's going to happen after that. Mm -hmm. And that's just something I always told myself because I've seen what happens in the industry. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of the, the ugliness of it. And we need to be real about it. Absolutely. So does she come running to you about mm. some of these challenges? You have to sit there and listen, yes. play big sister, not yes. just someone in the business. And yes. you have to give advice at the same time. Yeah. Um, most of the time she doesn't even listen to you. Yes. <laughs> yes. The founder syndrome. Yes. I told you. I, I'll but eventually she'll come back and she'll be like, okay, I should have you listened. Right. <laughs> you are right. Great yes. feeling, right? That's why you need me. That's why I'm here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do without your sister? I know. I don't know what I would do without her. Yes. Yeah. So growing the business, and I'm sure you've come in also at a time when the business was expanding, where there were more people that you couldn't do it on your own yeah. anymore. More. So it does make sense. What what would you advise people to be cognizant of if you are going to rope in your relatives into into a business? I think you need to be at least two or three years into your business. Okay. You need to love your business like it's your child. Before you let anyone else into your business, you need to know where am I going? What do I want to do? Mm -hmm. What is my vision for this company in the next five to 10 years? What are my core values? Before, if you don't have that established, you can't bring anyone else in. Yeah. So you need to have that established first. Working with family is a very difficult task. It's not easy. We can smile and laugh, but behind the scenes, we can argue. There's things that happen, <laughs> but we 
always keep the business in mind and it's like, okay, look, we're going to disagree today. I'm not going to see you tomorrow, but the next day when we come together, we must come to a decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for anyone out there that is a business owner and you're thinking of doing that, think wisely, be mm. realistic. Mm. You have those family members that are serious about things and then you have those family members that are not so serious about things. Right. So you need to look at it and be like, what are your weaknesses and what are your strengths and how can I use that to yes. my advantage? Because it's easy for us to have the soft spot and think, yes. oh, you know, it's family. Let me and help you, you presume that we're raised together mm -hmm. so we'll be the same, we'll have the same work ethic, the yeah. same values. No. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> no, not all the time. Like that. No. no. Yeah. Oh, it's been lovely, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. Latasha, thank you so much. Thank you. You're so you. beautiful. <laughs> I can't get over how beautiful you are. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing her PR thing. That's what PR yes. mavens do. <laughs> but when we return, I'm going to be wrapping up my evening with the assistant manager for the Gauteng Enterprise Propeller. That's Nomonde Zulu, who will be letting us in on what they do uh, over the next few weeks. We're in partnership with them and we'll be highlighting some of the important work that the GEP does. The Gauteng Enterprise Propeller are known as the go-to avenue for SMMEs and cooperatives that need customized business solutions to propel and develop them into active participants in the Gauteng mainstream economy. Well, joining me now on the couch to tell us about the role of this development and also some of the success stories that they've been seeing over the years and some of the things we'll be embarking on in the next four weeks here on Real Talk in partnership with the GEP is Assistant Manager Nomonde Zulu. Welcome, Nomanda. Welcome to Real Talk. Thank you. We're embarking on an exciting chapter, but before we get to that, I want to first understand your role and your function in supporting and helping to develop SMMEs. I think we're in a space that's awesome because we're here to create an economy that already has been there, but we're trying to really enhance it and propel it and make sure that SMMEs get developed. So it's those co-ops, it's to make sure they have funded, mm -hmm. it's to make sure they are competitive, it's to make sure they have added value into society and make sure what they are doing already, the Magogo who's been making Magwenya for years, let's enhance her because she has an MBA yeah, but her, and her MBA is here. Mm. It might not be something that is manual that she can show you, mm. but she's been doing it. She's taken her children to school with it. And those are the people that we want to start with. But we also want to see franchises. We want to see people grow to say, I'm a diamond cutter. Yeah. I am polishing my diamonds and I'm selling them in the Congo. But to get to that, we need to make sure the preparation mm. is there. Mm. And that's what we're that there the for. Foundation that foundation is, is there. Solid. So that when you go through the hard times, you can handle it because you know what is available, who can fund you, who can't fund you, who mm -hmm. can give you the opportunities and who can't. So uh, are you, do you consider um, specific categories or are you open to all industries? We're open to all industries. Our definition of SMME is anyone who's making a turnover of under 4 million um, because anything below that you, you can do whatever. Yeah. You're, the sky's the limit because anything can go. Even the shopkeeper that's in the corner mm. is fighting just to make sure they make ends meet, but they can hire somebody. So our employment rate can really go down yeah. by the fact that we can hire people in those small businesses, not necessarily in corporate. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in government, we can't hire more people. There's too many of us already in there doing the work. Yes, so we need entrepreneurs. We, we need those entrepreneurs need, to start yeah. something uh -huh. and be able to say, I've hired four people who are in my IT business or who are making cakes. I need that to be our next level hmm. of, of people who are SMMEs and are creating an economy. What do you see at the point of application? I come with an idea, I've been working at it, it's operating, but I do want to get on to the next level. So I come to the GEP. What, what, what are some of the challenges and the mistakes that applicants often make? I think we, we want to be entitled to a lot of things. Ooh. Uh, and yes, our politicians are great, but we also need to be realistic. Yes. So I think some of the ideas that come through are from, I saw somebody do this, okay, and then I want to try it as well. Mm -hmm. And therefore not getting innovative ideas. We're getting ideas that are common. Okay. And therefore when I say to people, you know, nobody's manufacturing condoms in South Africa. Why don't you try that? Why don't you find an opportunity? Go and research. Mm -hmm. So we take your idea, mm -hmm. we try and break it down. We mm -hmm. open you up to what else can you do besides the ordinary mm -hmm. so that it becomes something that's 
still within your realm of con control, but it can be then break, broken down into bigger items. Yes, yourself. and fill that gap in the market or fill that gap in our manufacturing mm -hmm. sector. In of the course, country. find something that's opportunistic. Find that in your area, there is always a gig of some sort that's happening. Are you a DJ? Do you have the equipment? Is it yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it, are you hiring it out? Are mm -hmm. you spending more money on, 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 on stationery, on, on something else? Um, or, or, or find opportunities that make sense. Yes, and we often there. want uh, the investment to come in the form of buy me a building, yes. buy me equipment. You know, so what exactly do you fund? We will fund equipment. We have part grant that we do, which is the non-financial um, assistance that we will offer. We will help you get to a particular point. So if you need that machine that is for printing, we will buy you that printing machine okay. so that you can start that business. Right. It's there. The equipment is yours. Your bank balance is already at a better scale. Mm. Um, we will make sure that the loans are available to you when you are buying bigger equipment so that you can run that um, engine garage. You can then run any of the franchises that are out there, but yes. it's an opportunity that we are able to harness you on. Don't just go into construction when you don't know how it works. Get into it because you have a passion yeah. and you will be able to follow it up yeah. and know all the sectors in constructions, not just I build a house, but also know that there's other opportunities within mm. the demolition part mm -hmm. is available. You must know all the components. Okay, so what will we be doing over the next few weeks? What can our viewers look forward to? Well, we've been running a couple of competitions uh, where people will pitch their idea yes. and they will tell us uh, how Isn't great they are. Isn't the process so nerve-wracking? It's uh, going to be fun. Look, it is going <laughs> to be awesome <laughs> because they need to understand in 10 minutes or five minutes, yeah. you need to be able to tell us what is it that you're going to do, what are the challenges that you're facing, and how is it that you expect us to help you, yeah. knowing what our mandate is and knowing how else we will be able to do business better. Give me two quick examples of the success stories you've had through the GEP, like the types of businesses that have, you know, somehow that have accelerated. Okay. Um, there's a gentleman in Alexandra who is running a panel beating shop. He ran it from his backyard for probably about 10 years. Yeah. Um, and when he came through to us, he said to us, look, um, I want to move into a bigger premises. Mm -hmm. Can you help me to do that? We went around to try and help him. He has now got a full booth that he can utilize. Wow. Um, so there are lots of success stories. There's lots. There's, I think people should many. go onto your website and also just keep tabs on uh, what we'll be doing in coming Correct. weeks. Correct. Normanda, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. It gives hope, especially when we know we're living through tough economic times. And this is how we wrap up the show, another Real Talk episode for this evening. I want to say thank you so much to all of my lovely guests for joining me this evening. And uh, do if you have any stories that you would like to share with us, your personal experiences of going into business with a family member or perhaps your views on today's topic, go onto our social media platforms. It's at Real Talk on 3. From me and the rest of the team, thank you so much for watching. It's a date again tomorrow evening. I'm Zania Mosaka. Thank you for watching here on SABC 3. Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei.